before that time I'll re review everything so training technique not time technique everything for those of you who are coming here for the first time anybody coming for the first time today yeah, yeah. so I'll just give you a brief outline of the are you is it rolling now camera it's rolling you, you look me. great you <laughs> told me my god I'm playing it cool okay so for those of you who have come today this is a needle there are two types of needles one is a cutting needle other is called a round body needle how do we determine a cutting needle or a round body needle it depends on the cross sectional appearance suppose you were to take a cross section through this needle and if you were to look at it end on if it appears triangular in shape then it is called a cutting needle and if you were to take the same cross section and we to look at it end on and it appears circular in shape then it is called a round body needle so the next question is when do we use a round body needle and when do we use a cutting needle? Round body needle is used for delicate structures like peritoneum, mesentery, intestine, all these conditions we use a round body needle. And when do we use a cutting needle? We use it for tough structures like the skin, we use it for the rectus sheath, we use it for the linea alba. So for these structures, so since this is the mimic, mimicking uh, of the skin, so we shall be using cutting needle for this. This is supposed to mimic a skin condition. Okay, so this time I'm going to, though this is a skin, but we usually use this continuous technique as you showed in the second video. We use it on the linea alba. After you have done a laparotomy, you have done whatever procedure had to be done inside, first you have to close the linea alba. Linea alba is a fibrous, tough fibrous layer which is in the middle line, where all the fibers mesh in the middle. So let's assume that this is the linea alba. So before we start with the procedure, let me remove all these knots here. The first step is we have to take a bite full thickness as usual. Assume this is the linea alba and you take a full thickness bite on the other side without taking your needle out. Push it, grab, grab hold of this end and pull it out. Always remember that there's always an assistant on the other side who's assisting you. Take double throws. Put the first knot. See it's how quickly silk tends to slip. Silk is notorious for slipping. Uh, nylon, all these things. Make sure we have taken multiple throws so that it is firmly embedded. What would you recommend on that? For which one? Oh, for the silk though, what would you recommend? How many this is times? nylon, not silk. Oh, uh, for nylon then. Yes. So after you've taken multiple throws and you've firmly embedded the knot, what we do is in actual practice, the end which I'm holding now, we just put an artery forcep like this and we put it to one side. But now I can because I don't have an artery forcep. Now the next job will be, assistant should give constant traction on this end so that it doesn't become loose. So since there is no assistant, I'm going to show it to you without, I'll just do it myself. I'm going to lift it up like this and I'm going to take another bite next, full thickness, other side, full thickness, other side. And now I'm going to just continue. Assistant has to keep giving traction, otherwise this will tend to become loose. Next, I'll continue with the procedure. Take another bite and take the next bite. See, things will not now start coming obliquely. Just keep following. Assistant is giving constant traction here. Next bite and a full thickness bite. The other side. Now the knots, the suture line will come slightly obliquely. This is how we close the linea alba. Next bite.
should be almost evenly spaced out and they should be roughly parallel with each other. When you reach the end, I'll show you how to finish the knot. That is a little tricky, so let me continue till we reach the end. now because the loop is becoming very small I'll have to tie a knot so this is where I'll finish okay I'm assuming that I've reached the end of my linear alba so now what I'll do is I will not completely tighten this instead I'll keep it a little loose here this one I'll keep it a little loose now watch a loop here and I catch hold of this and I pull and it becomes a knot then again I take the reverse, catch hold of the tip here and I pull and it becomes a knot. And then I catch here, put multiple throws there we go and we are done. So I'm assuming that we have reached the end of our linear and we cut it off. So this is the procedure for doing a continuous suture of the linear alba which they showed here. They showed only the first two steps. This is how we complete the whole thing. So now all of you start and 